Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 195. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. So, our diggers for today, Catdog Joe, Michael Madsen, and Happy Kitty, all happen to do a team dig together, wingames backslash misc backslash hex map, and it's very quick, so let's get to it. Part of me feels like this is just going to be a program to generate a hexagonal grid for, like, strategy games or something. I'm going to file id.diz. Hex map will print out hexagon grid maps used for war games like Starfleet Battles. <laughs> One of, like, only a handful that I'm actually aware of and know anything about. <laughs> Number of rows and columns can be changed, and you can set the size of the new hexagons. You can even produce condensed maps with four normal Starfleet Battles maps or more on one sheet of paper. That would be an extremely tiny map if it fit on one sheet of paper. Oh, it's saying for designing scenarios. Okay, that, that makes a bit more sense. And apparently it says here in the in the right file that a deluxe version of hex map is available for twenty dollars. As the ability to set the color and fill pattern of the hexes, the font and height of the hex numbers, and the ability to change the title of the map to something other than the standard advertisement blurb. So that almost kind of kind of suggests that there isn't actually a lot of customization in this program. Apparently it was made by a Paul Yugi G G. Oh wow, <laughs> that's going to be a hard one. Um, I guess Paul Gugui. 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 <laughs> that's, a, that's a tricky last name there. <laughs> uh, well, the fact that it has two Ys within the space of six letters. <laughs> uh, apparently it also offers source code for this. Program is written in Actor 3.1. An object-oriented programming language from the Whitewater group using Object Graphics Library and the Project Management Extensions by Steve Hatchett, which appeared in Dr. Dobbs Journal. Huh. I have no idea what any of that is. Okay, so if we actually run the program here, um, well, we don't know if it's going to maximize properly yet, but I'm going to guess it will. This is for designed for making, like, hex hexagonal maps and everything. Um, got an about thing there. Uh, apparently he's got an email address, so for a 1991 program, you don't see that very often. So yeah, it seems that draw and print look like identical menus, but I guess this one is for actually printing to a printer, and then this one's for actually drawing it. So if we just say, like, this tactical map here... Okay, so we do actually have control over these settings. So scale... So I'm guessing this, this like, the... Um, yeah, dot, dots per inch. So I'm guessing this is like the size of each hexagonal thing, although I don't know what measurement. Um, rows, columns, starting row number, starting column number. Uh, we just go with that, it's... Yeah, there we go. Okay, the mouse cursor looks like this crosshair thing, but it doesn't actually seem to do anything. Um, draw zoom level. Zoom level for draw 3. I guess that's where it is. So what if we do like 5? Well, that's weird, it actually got smaller, so... I'm guessing a draw a zoom of one. Okay, and that actually gives us the actual dots that it would print out. Like the only trouble here is that you can't really fit it on one page here, and yet this is trying to. So I'm not exactly certain how it would print it. Like it has these special ones that we can't use, and then there's also yeah, a custom size thing, which is pulls up the same same detail. So these okay, so these are just presets which automatically bring up the custom size window with the preset numbers in it. Got it. So yeah, I can't exactly test the printing functionality of this, but if this does what I think it would do, then yeah, you'd pr probably print your hex map out across multiple pages, and then there you go. You'd probably have to tape it all together, but it wasn't exactly unheard of. So not really a lot to this program. Um... I guess maybe I'll just give everybody another little dig, because, yeah, there was, wasn't really much here, was there? 
Next, Happy Kitty has dug up DOS games backslash kid games backslash BERT PA30. This is probably another one of those BERT's coloring program things. Um, 37 files. Yeah, because we got a BERT.exe. We've got BPA30.doc, register.doc. A uh, quick look at BPA30.doc. So what exactly is this? BERT's prehistoric animals. Okay, so this is probably going to be another one of those coloring programs. Yep, that's what it says right here. So let's just get this over with. We kind of know what to expect already because we've already had, what was it, a Christmas themed one? And something else? I forgot. Yay, no, <laughs> no blood curdling scream. Because <laughs> I think everybody remembers the first time we had one of these. It was like, <laughs> yeah, there was a, that scream effect. Was, I, th I think it was supposed to be like cheering or something, but yeesh. Anyways, um, wait, what? Okay, I was about to say, I'd be very, <laughs> are we doing like Jurassic Park sort of thing here? Um, now it says prehistoric animals. I do recognize some of them. Like we got a saber tooth tiger here. Um, that's not the same thing, apparently. Huh. We got the woolly mammoth. And we got, I think that's reindeer. I didn't know reindeer were prehistoric. Um, oh yeah, that's right. If you click on them, it actually tells you what they are. Oh, Irish elk. So it's not even a reindeer. <laughs> and then you go and position it, and there you go. Although it'd be nice if we could actually like see what they were before actually putting it down, because like when I clicked on it, it gave me the name and then immediately went to placing it. Okay, so this is supposed to be the dire wolf. Um, I guess we'll put it here. Okay, this one just looks like a horse. But apparently it's not. <laughs> like really, that just looks like a horse. I guess maybe it was like a sp oh wait a minute, look at its feet. Those are not horse hooves. So I guess it is different in some ways, isn't it? And then we do the basic coloring, like making the ground red, making the sky purple, and the animals can all be cyan, because why not? There, the most beautiful piece of art ever created. And I might be lying. I guess I could try putting a story to this. So if we click on, Okay, uh, I, 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 that's what I said. This is the most beautiful piece of art ever. <laughs> Definitely not lying. Definitely didn't cut the video to add this in ahead of time and make it seem like I didn't type that. So yeah, it's Bert's Prehistoric Animals. It's another one of these coloring programs. That's about all there is to say about that. Next up, Cat Dog Joe has dug up win games backslash GG backslash bomb squad. Okay, for something like this, I keep thinking back to the Intellivision game, because it has a voice and it goes, Mattel Electronics presents Bomb Squad. <laughs> or something like that. Uh, I got a setup. Okay, it looks like the setup is probably... Yeah, I don't think it's going to be anything too necessary here. Um, we do have a write file, users gd. Okay, I guess this is just the instructions here. Um, object of Bomb Squad is to defuse a time bomb by correctly guessing its secret code before it explodes. Requires 286, 386, or Pentium computer? When the heck did this come out? Okay, I'm looking at the file date in the corner of my eye there. It says 94. It looks like late 94. So, Pentiums must have been... Yeah, Pentiums would have been brand new at the time. So... Okay. <laughs> And it looks like the registered version is 750. And it says, <laughs> if you find the program useful. Yes, if you find the program teaches you how to defuse bombs, please send $7.50. <laughs> and apparently it was a pocket-sized software. So maybe we'll see an author when we actually run the program. Shall we play a game? And stealing quotes from war games. Or stealing voice clips, anyways. So this is just Mastermind, isn't it? Like, I mean, we got the colored pegs. We got a li list of what we've accomplished. 
It actually says what the current time is. That's interesting. Because, yeah, I'm recording this at about 7.42 in the evening right now. Okay, we do have a name. So it's an Eric Bergman Terrell. And, yeah. Nothing much more than that. So the help is just saying the code consists of four colors. Make the guesses. Oh, this is weird. To guess the code, press the buttons on the bottom of the control panel in the order you want. After you've chosen four colors, you'll find out. Number of correct colors, number of correct colors in correct positions, which is blue icons. Number of correct colors in incorrect positions. But it still has blue in it, so I'm not entirely certain if I get that. Oh, they're just columns. Okay. So instead of, instead of showing it with like, because usually in a Mastermind clone, you're using colored pegs to indicate the valid ones and the ones that simply need to be shuffled around. Here, it's actually using numbers and columns. So, okay, I get it. Okay, and we can set the maximum number of guesses. <laughs> one? You'd never get it in one unless you were stupid lucky. Let me guess the time limit also goes down to one. <laughs> yeah, if you're really crazy. And allow dupl duplicate colors. Okay. Okay, and that reset it when we did that. So, I guess there's another Mastermind game. So, let's do red, yellow, green, blue. One in the correct position. One needs to be shuffled around. So, let's say yellow, double yellow, double blue. Same thing. So, I'm going to guess that there is a yellow in there and that the either the yellow or the blue is in the correct spot. Actually, this is confusing because it's using like this darker red here as another color, but that's very similar to the other red that's already in there. Okay, um, interesting. So because removing the red and the green and the extra yellow and the extra blue, placing it with those, with this setup here, we only have one valid in the correct spot. So I think this blue is right. But I also think there's a second blue in here as well. Actually, let's just test that. Go like that. Nothing's right there. Oh. So that means this blue this blue is not correct in the slightest. Well, that means there's no blue in here. So there's no blue and there's no dark red. So that means when we see this one here and we see that two of these are in here, that means one of these yellows is correct and one of them is incorrect. And we also know based on this up here that there's also a potentially a red or a green. So if I go red, yellow, yellow, red. Okay, that says two are right. So I think the yellows are right, and I think it's actually going to be like this. Ah. There we go. Congratulations. You guessed the code and defused the bomb. But it doesn't allow us to see our actual end result. That's kind of lame. It shouldn't automatically start up like that. It should allow you to manually start your next game. Like, what if I wanted to take a break and go, like, go get a drink or something? It's already counting down to my imminent doom. <laughs> hey. So that was Bomb Squad. It's a Mastermind clone, seven dollars fifty cents. For what? For as cheap as it is, it's not that bad. And our last dig for today from Michael Madsen is Win Games backslash Arcade Two backslash Charge. This could be literally anything. Um, Arcade Two Charge an exe file ID help and read me. What's the file ID? Dot say. MS Windows Physics Game. That is the shortest file ID ever. Okay, what's a readme say? So this, this disc contains the program Charge. Charge is copyright 1993 by Ernest Edgar. Charge requires Microsoft Windows 3.0 or higher. That's never a good sign. Copy Charge to your hard disk and Windows Program Manager. Do the stuff and double click to start. Okay, so the readme isn't too extensive either. What about the help file? Okay, so Charge is a simple game for one to six players. Left side of the Charge window contains various controls that player uses to select an initial angle and speed for a projectile. 
When the fire button is clicked, the projectiles released travel through an array of positive and negative charges in the play field. Okay, so it's one of these puzzle games where you're trying to... I think we've encountered a few of these before. Or hang on. The projectile track is calculated using discrete time steps. At each step, the force vectors from each of the charges on the play field are summed and applied to the projectile using the formula A equals F over M. The resulting acceleration determines the velocity vector for the next iteration. All calculations are done using floating point math. Um, maybe this is a little more complicated than expected. <laughs> okay, so here's the game. Um, yeah, this is not a normal grid. <laughs> so what are we trying to do again? The fire button is clicked, projectile is released, travel through an array of positive and negative charges on the playfield. Object of the game is to choose an initial speed and angle so that your projectile impacts the playfield wall as close as possible to the lower right corner. So we're basically just trying to make a high score by trying to get the projectile as close to here as possible. How much does the guy want for this? I mean, geez, he wanted $15 for this? Okay, um, like here's the thing, it's a kind of a neat idea, but at the same time, it's like, this is something that people are just going to screw with and not really attempt to really make any solid progress with, because of the sheer amount of just not really being able to, f like this is the kind of thing where, because all the math involved is so complicated, the best you can do is just sort of wing it. Like, let's just try firing a shot right here. So if we go fire, so yeah, it gave us, gave us 41 points. Well, how do we make that better? Like, I mean, we could just speed it up. Full speed. Yeah, that gives us 11 points. Wait, 11 points? Okay, so it doesn't s flat out say it, but it seems that your score is based, it, that the lower your score is, the better. So, yeah, so you're just sort of, you just sort of adjusted a bit, you fire, you adjusted a bit, you fire, like, <sighs> this really isn't something that lends itself well to any kind of multiplayer, although it'd probably be better if we had a better layout of, layout of things. Okay, that's kind of fun. <laughs> watching what the autoplay does. Although, watching the autoplay do that just kind of exemplifies how little of an effect these little these little atoms have. Actually, how many charges will it let us have in here? A hundred? Will it work with a hundred? Oh. Um, well, that's complicated. <laughs> Actually, let's do that whole um, autoplay thing, see what happens here. It didn't fire any beams. Okay, so it is it is working, it's just not going anywhere because the particles are right next to the thing. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting some interesting results here. Okay, maybe a hundred particles is a little too many. Okay, let's try twenty particles. Now we'll keep the speed where it is and we'll autoplay it. Yeah, see the crazy thing is that looking at what this drew up here, I would almost argue that this program is better as an artistic tool than as an actual game. Because, quite frankly, I would not want to play a game like this, ever. Because the whole objective is to try and get it as close to that corner as possible. Well, with the play field all random like this, and with not really having a grasp over, like, actual distances and stuff, like, there's a reason why players gravitate towards a grid when it comes to a board game or something. Because then you actually have some layer of understanding what your actions are going to do. I mean, I know game, board games exist where you actually do have pieces that have to be 
pr positioned very precisely because you're taking actual measurements to determine things, but you've got to be a pretty hardcore player to play something like that. Whereas this right here <laughs> is demanding that same level of hardcore precision thinking that the average person is not going to want to do. Even just making this little video right here showing this program, I had more entertain got more entertainment out of this just using the autoplay feature <laughs> than actually trying to play it. So yeah, that was Charge. It's interesting. It's just not worth $15 from a gameplay perspective.